morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's difficult to describe how you feel when you've had years of aspiration and then you look up and you say, it's there. We did it. Good morning. It is Wednesday morning and the countdown continues. We have two more days to go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? <laughs> My people. The day starts off fast. As soon as you start at 7 in the morning, the people are coming off that train, everybody's hustling, because you know New York is always fast speed. Everybody in New York is in a rush. But it, it, what's the best part about it, they may be in a rush, but when they walk into the Fulton Center, they're like, they can't believe it, because a lot of them used to come here when it was an old subway. So they start thinking back, like, what it looked like then. Over 300,000 people a day were passing through a complex that was very confusing. With architecture, creating a place that was easily identifiable from the surface and helping people find their way. That was the brief. What we crave for in a city is connection to nature and connection to the sky and to natural light would transform that space. So to get the light all the way to the platform level, um, we simply had to create a huge circular opening right at the center of the building. Um, and then beneath that, strategically located openings through to the lowest concourse level. And then above that, just having an absolutely uninterrupted ascending volume or space all the way to the oculus, which is approximately 100 feet above the lowest level providing that clear connection to daylight above. When I first got here and I looked up there, I was like, wow. <laughs> like, I cannot believe this place. Every subway in New York City should look like this. And like, yo, I think it's beautiful. It's very unique. Very early on, we produced some illustrative ideas that show this concept for an inner liner for redirecting daylight down to the lowest levels. But I think one of the most satisfying components of the design of the Fulton Center was the collaboration with the artist James Carpenter. Uh, and James came along and, and he, he got our ideas straight away. And I think in many respects then amplified them with a, a new line of thinking. And the product is the Sky Reflector Net, which is this wonderful you know, installation within the transit center. It's a series of just over 950 diamond-shaped uh, aluminum panels uh, that redirect that light, but also form a reflection of the sky above. And so the intention being that the sky folds into the transit center. And uh, if you're there in different lighting conditions, uh, it brings a whole new level of animation to the space. It's ever-changing. It's best when the sun is shining, because then you see in the floor the whole reflection. The circle of light starts from the glass rails, and it goes all the way around toward the turnstiles. It makes, it makes the building bright. It keeps the building bright. The reflectors are suspended on a cable net, uh, and that cable net was completely fabricated away from the site, and it was brought in complete and uh, attached to a ring, and the ring was raised, and then the lower section then tensioned, uh, and very quickly, of course, it then just takes on that form. Jamie was particularly interested in the kind of materiality of the reflector. The shape of it is, is a direct reflection of how the sun uh, moves around that space. 
So it's longer on one side because it's capturing the sunlight and bouncing it down. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Uh-oh. It's school day. We're indoors, and we definitely feel like we're outdoors because then they, they all sit up in the window sills and have their lunch and all type of stuff. And when they finish, they can get up and go to work or go on the subway. <laughs> so it seems like everybody's like walking in one big indoor park. The pavilion building, or the building that creates the enclosure, is heavily glazed, allowing the sidewalk to flow through the building, creating a place that could be highly visible to passers-by, um, but also feel as if it was part of the sidewalk culture. We also felt very strongly that from the inside, you had to see downtown. You had to be able to look through the building, see the life of the street, capture very quickly landmarks so that you could orient yourself before then working your way out onto the sidewalks themselves. The other day, I saw customers passing through, and instead of rushing to their train, they paused and took pictures of the roof itself, uh, of, of the Oculus, uh, as opposed to just quickly passing through. Tremendously gratifying. Tremendously gratifying.